Goulash di manzo e patate. We are in northern Italy and we're making goulash. You say goulash in Italy, but yes. But basically what it is, it's a long braising process of secondary cuts of meat. Uh, and in this case, it's beef. So you need a nice kind of big pan, uh, thick if possible, because this is gonna braise for two hours, two to three hours until everything is cooked. I'm gonna put some salt in the, the meat. That's number one. oil in the pan, and we're gonna slightly flour the pieces of meat. Not over flour, but just slightly. It'll give it um, a little caramelization, extra flavor. It'll densen the sauce at the end. All of those benefits from flour that's been browned and then cooked. I mean, you can flour it a few minutes before that, but if you flour it way before, what will happen is that the flour will get wet from the liquids of the meat, and then you won't get the effect that you want. So, yes, you can flour it a little before, but not too much before. Okay, so I'm just testing because I want it to be nice and hot. Shaking off the excess flour. While that's browning, let's add some more flavor, and that's in a pestata. But I like to add a little bit of bacon. Garlic, lots of garlic, and... This is caramelized, nice. Okay, so we're ready with the pestata. And this is one of those dishes that uh, you can make when you have a crowd coming. You can double this recipe easily. Just, you know, be careful of the cooking time. So it's great. Let's, this has been browned. And, you know, we're gonna cook this again, so you certainly don't need to. To cook it, all you want to brown is the surface and the flour that's on it. Okay, let's put in the second batch. But while that's browning, you know, I love when you go to my social media and you ask questions. It's a way of me directly responding to what you want to know. And this is a question from Andy Setnarovsky from California. And he wants to know, how long do spices last when they come fresh versus dry? Well, Andy, it's a completely different subject. You have dry spices and you have fresh herbs. The dry spices, once they are packaged and dried, they last quite a bit of time. They can last three, four, five months, even more. But of course, the fresher they are, the better they are, and keep them nice and sealed in a jar. Whereas fresh herbs, like uh, sage and rosemary and basil, and you can keep it just like a flower in a vase with some water and the stems and will keep a bit longer, but you want to use your fresh herbs when they are fresh. This is caramelized nice. Okay, and now we'll put the pestata right in there and let that render itself. And we can, once that's rendered and the garlic have, has cooked a bit, we throw in the meat right again with all its juices.
take the salt. We will put the paprika, the cumin, all just in there. Mm -hmm. Bay leaves, and I'll give it a little mix. So this kind of toasts a little bit. And then I'm gonna add tomato paste right in here. And I wanna toast that as well. The lemon rind. And you know, lemon rind, especially if you use meats, like meats that are maybe even a bit fatty, uh, a bit of lemon, lemon rind, always kind of freshes it up. And uh, once this is caramelized nice, you have to stand by. We'll just add some hot water. And you don't wanna add a lot of water all at once because then it becomes soup. You want a braising. What happens to braising as you're adding a little bit of water or stock or whatever at the time is that there's an exchange between the meat releasing its sauces and then taking it back in. If you have a lot of water, you know, it's, it's a chemical reaction, one will try to neutralize the other. So if you have a lot of water, the water will pull everything out of the meat. So the meat won't have as much flavor, but the stock will. So you want to do it a little bit at the time, just like that. I'm going to lower it to a perking point. You put the lid on and let it slowly perk until it lowers down, add some more water, and this movement back and forth. I will clean up, and then we'll come back to it periodically to check on it. Celebrate like an Italian. Cookies and gelato. Italian wafer cookies, they come in all flavors. We used to love them when we were kids and called them Napoletane, but now I go even a step further with them. When you're in a pinch for a dessert and guests are coming, just take a wafer, take some ice cream that you have, and just make a delicious wafer and ice cream sandwich. Cover it up with the wafer and voila, you have a wafer ice cream sandwich. And who doesn't love that? Here I have some lemon ones with lemon ice cream. I have hazelnuts with hazelnut ice cream. Put them in the freezer and you have them ready when those big and little mouths come to visit and they want something good to munch on. Frozen treats like these are easy to pull together, so don't forget when you're in a pinch to do just that. So the beef has been braising, oh, for more than an hour, nice. And you see it's beginning to cook down. All these spices are already in there. We're gonna add the onions, and the onions kind of, I leave the little stem so it stays in one piece. And of course, potatoes, patate. And this one makes this goulash a complete meal. So, patate, cipolla, e manzo. Patate, potatoes, cipolla, onion, e manzo is beef. So let's add that. And the patate. So I'm looking at this, do I need a little bit more of, of water? Maybe, maybe a little bit more hot water because this will all have to cook down. I need to put salt for the potatoes and for the onions. And when you do this, when you add anything, the first thing you want it to come to boil as quickly as possible. And then you lower it down and let it kind of perk away because you, know, you don't want it to just sit in there. You want it to get back into, into the rhythm that it was, just cooking. So the goal here is that the sauce is perfectly velvety and delicious, that the manzo, the beef, is fork tender, the potatoes are just kind of ready to fall apart, and the onion is sweet and tender. Let's cover it. I'm gonna put it to a little simmer, and I'll come back periodically to taste it, to mix it, uh, and ultimately to see when it's done. Italy has 20 regions, and one would think of Italian food as a big unified pot uh, of pasta, if you will. But it's much more than that. Uh, within the 20 regions, 
each one has its historical past. And as you cross over to the part that I come from, the Friuli, Venezia, Giulia, the Trieste, the Istria region, and there you can see, you can see the goulash, the, the, the strudel, but also that area was very much part of the Venetian uh, uh, city-state, the Serenissima, which ruled for more than uh, a thousand years. And they were known and they got the strength and the richness from the spice trade, from the Middle East and the Orient. And that cuisine is very much influenced by the use of black pepper, cinnamon, cloves. Now these are all ingredients that do not grow in the area. Spices, dry spices, usually grow in the tropic belt and Venice in that area is in the temperate belt. So we use a lot of fresh herbs, but the remnants of the Serenissima, of the travels of the Venetian and the spice trades is still very much reflected in the cooking of that area. The goulash should be ready now. Yeah, 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 perfect. Mm. The potatoes, as I said, you know, the, the onions, the potatoes, everything, the meat looks great. I have a bay leaf here, so try to pick out the bay leaves when you find them, but I think I'm ready to serve. And if you find that it's sometimes a little bit too juicy, you know, you can continue to cook it. You can also spoon out the, the, the meat and the potatoes because I think the potatoes are just perfect, as is the meat. And, uh, and then you can continue to cook the rest of the sauce down, actually. Mm. A little bits and pieces for Lydia because I want to taste, I want to tell you how it is. With a ladle, add on some more sauce. Mm. Could you serve it with some bread? Yeah, I guess some bread. You could serve it with some polenta, I guess, but you have, you have the starch, you have everything that you need, a complete meal. And it's, you know, I have to taste it for you. But you see how the meat just kind of breaks right into pork tender pieces of meat. A lot of you tell me, Lydia, we watch you when you're ready to taste and you anticipate just like we do on this side, and I do. I'm really excited, I wanna get in there, I wanna taste it, I wanna taste it if it comes out the way it's supposed to, the way I would like it. So, this is still nice and hot. Let me take a little bit piece of the time, a little bit of onion, a little bit of meat. Mm. Tender, delicious. If there ever was a comfort food, this certainly is. And, um, you know, those beautiful hills of Italy. This could be an awfully inviting dish.